Welcome to John Gets Games. Today I'll be doing a full two-player playthrough of Santorini. This game is currently live on Kickstarter and it will be until April 27th of 2016. And in the game, each player takes on the role of a god and they are commanding some little builders on this island in the middle of the ocean, trying to build the tallest towers and then get their builder up to the top in order to win. Uh, each god has different asymmetric player powers that shift them in different directions as far as what they can do. And, uh, well, I'll go ahead and jump into the game now, and I'll explain the rest of the rules as we go. And when I'm done, I'll give you some impressions I've had of the game so far. Before I jump into the game, I want to show you some of the differences between the print run that I will be doing this video for and the one that will actually be going through with Kickstarter. First of all, I will be playing with these individual blocks here, but the Kickstarter one is going to have these nice molded pieces here. So this is the first level. Uh, we're going to just stack two of these on top of each other for the second level, but the Kickstarter, these will be able to stack up like that. And the third level will just be three for us, but that little um, circular spot will get to go up there. And finally, there's a really big dome here, and we have this nice blue dome that will get to go on the top there. Lastly, there are going to be figurines similar to these that you'll get to play with uh, with the final production run of the game. But for this video, I'll be using the blocks and the cylinders for the builders. And lastly, I do want to show you this really awesome board. It's kind of floating on a rocky pedestal over this ocean, and this is a pretty good representation of what the final uh, production version of the game will look like. The first thing that you do in the game is deal out four of these numerous god cards to each of the players, and then they pick one of the four that they get dealt. The left-hand player chooses Artemis, and the right-hand player chooses Demeter. Each of them has a special ability, but I'll explain those as we play the game. Artemis gets to go first, so they have to place both of their builders somewhere on the map. They'll go ahead and put one over there and one over there. And now Demeter has to put both of their people down, and they'll go ahead and put one over here and one down there. The structure of a turn is really simple. Each player takes one of their builders and they move it, and they can go in orthogonal or diagonal movement, and then they build one building block down onto an orthogonal or diagonal spot that is next to the builder they moved. They're not able to move into a zone that already has another builder, and of course they can't put a block down where a builder already is. The bonus that Artemis gets is they get to move their builder twice before they do their build, and the bonus that Demeter gets is once they've moved, they can actually build two different blocks down, but they have to be in different spots. The Artemis player begins, they're only going to move once, and they're going to go ahead and build this block down here, kind of trying to put it in the corner to start building some buildings, but also be able to control the uh, ability of the Demeter player to get in on it. Demeter seems okay with that, they're going to move once over here, and now they get to put two blocks down, so they'll go ahead and put one there, and one there. So it's pretty powerful, they can build twice as fast. Artemis decides they want to be a little closer to all this action that Demeter is doing, so they get to move twice, and then they're going to build one building down. And Artemis decides to move here. Now they can see that Demeter might want to move up onto this block because you're allowed to jump up onto buildings but only at one at a time. You can't go from the base to a second level building. And if they did that, they could then build on this uh, first level building making it a second level building which the um, Artemis builder would not be able to scale up unless they built this little staircase here. And at the end of the day, you win the game if you're able to get one of your builders up onto a third level building. So they definitely want to have the ability to jump up here and stop the Demeter player from just overbuilding. Demeter seems unfazed by that. They move at a diagonal over to this block here, and then they're going to throw two blocks down, and they're actually going to stack up on both of these. So they're both second level buildings. Artemis decides to use their good movement to move twice, and they're going to throw this block down here, once again giving them the ability to potentially jump up onto these buildings that the Demeter player is building so quickly. Demeter thinks it's getting a little crowded over here, so they're going to go ahead and move this builder over, and they can throw two blocks down, so they may as well. They're going to throw them both down over here, and maybe they can start building over here and trying to spread the Artemis player out. It's back to Artemis, and with these two moves, they're going to jump up one level here, and then another level here, so they're on the second level. And then they're going to throw down this second level onto that zone there, hoping to maybe move over and get a third level built and try to rush up and put their builder on there to win. Demeter thinks that this builder is still in a pretty good position to do something about that, so they're going to jump up onto this spot here, and they'll throw two buildings down. It's back to Artemis, and they could move over here and build a third level building here. The issue is that these domes exist, and the Demeter player has a builder over here. Now these domes can only be built on a third level building, and if they were to move and be adjacent, they could plunk this down, and it essentially neutralizes that entire building, and no one is able to jump on top of it because it's so curved, they just fall off, I suppose, and it stops that building stack from being a possibility to win the game. So right now, they don't want to make this a third building stack, so they need to think about other options. 
So Artemis decides they're only going to move one spot to go over to here, and they're going to put their building down right here. It is next to where they're currently trying to build a tower, which would potentially let them win, and it also gives them the potential of jumping into this uh, situation over here to stop the Demeter player. Demeter decides that they're going to move up here, and they're going to throw down their two buildings. One goes here, and one goes here. They're essentially forcing the Artemis player's hand to build a dome on this spot here, because on their next turn, they could potentially just jump right up here and win. So Artemis really doesn't have much of a choice. They go ahead and move to this spot here, and now they go ahead and build this dome up here, stopping the Demeter player from going over there, but also uh, the Demeter player was able to split the Artemis builders up a little bit, and that might play into their favor. Demeter is unfazed, they saw that coming. They go ahead and move over here, and they're gonna throw two building blocks down over here. At this point, I think I'm gonna actually rotate the board a little bit so we can better see what's going on in that region of the board. The Artemis player knows that even though they're really mobile, there's no way they can catch up to the crazy building power of Demeter, so they really need to try and make use of the building blocks that Demeter makes. So they're going to go ahead and move one, two, to kind of get up in this business and try to utilize what's going on here. And then they'll go ahead and build right into this slot, which happens to be next to uh, this builder they already have here on the second level, and they'll try to make something happen here and uh, take advantage of the fact that Demeter is actually really slow. Demeter doesn't seem happy about this incursion. They're going to go ahead and move here, and they're going to build two blocks out here in the back, trying to get them kind of away from the Artemis player's current position. It's now Artemis' turn to try and put the pressure on Demeter, so they're going to go ahead and move twice, and then they will build a third level building here. Now they know that the Demeter player can move over here and build a dome, and they're fully expecting that, that player to do that, but it moves this builder piece away from a much better region, and maybe they can kind of trap him in there. So now Demeter doesn't really have a choice. If they don't build a dome here, then they immediately lose on the next turn. So they go ahead and move here, and they'll build their dome. Uh, they could build another building tile if they want to, but they don't think that's a good idea at this point. It's back to Artemis, and they decide to kind of undo that turn they just did. They'll go one, two, going back to that spot they were in. But now they're going to throw a building block over here, which is pretty much only because it's farther away from the Demeter player, so they can try to build some buildings and force the Demeter player to move away from these pretty nice regions. Demeter doesn't seem too phased by that. They're going to go ahead and move over here, and they're going to build one building block right there and another one right over here, essentially trying to build as many buildings as they possibly can in this area to the point where the uh, Artemis player cannot stop them from jumping up onto a third level. Maybe they can build uh, two third level buildings on the same turn, and that would be really powerful for them. The Artemis player decides to move over to this spot and build a second level building on this location, which is, again, the best spot on the board for them because it is far away from the Demeter player. This uh, builder would have to go all the way around, and this builder would have to go all the way around over here to try to get to this spot. In fact, on the following turn, the Artemis player could move this builder in such a position to build up to the third level here and go up on there on the next turn. So the Demeter player sees they have two turns to deal with this while still trying to do good stuff for themselves. I think I'm going to go ahead and spin the board again to get a little bit better perspective on what's going on in this region over here. Demeter decides to move down to this spot here, and since they must build at least one block, they're going to put one there, but they're not going to do a second block. Artemis sees that Demeter is kind of doing what they have to do to stop this potential combo, so what they're going to do is they're going to modify it a little bit. They're going to move here, and they're still going to go ahead and put the third level here, knowing full well that the Demeter player will have to move over here to put a dome down, but that really does pull the Demeter player very far away from all these big blocks over here. So now Demeter goes, and they have to move here. If they don't do this and build a dome up on this third level here, then the Artemis player would win, which is exactly the plan that the Artemis player was kind of forcing them into. Artemis can tell that they are in control of the tempo, so they're going to go ahead and move one spot over here, and then they're going to build another third level building because they know that the Demeter player can only move once and they can't go from the base to the third level. So they're going to have to move to either here or here in order to build a dome over here, which once again pulls their builder even farther away from this area. Demeter doesn't have a choice. They have to build a dome on this spot, which means they have to end in one of these two locations. They decide to go here, so at least they are going a little bit higher and they have a little bit more flexibility uh, for what they can do going on. So they'll go ahead and build this dome here. It's Artemis' turn and they've got a plan. They're going to jump into this hole here, and they're going to go ahead and build a third level building right here because they can see that the uh, Demeter's uh, builders are not in a position to build a dome up here. They have to move this one uh, to any of these zones, which will pull them away, 
and this one has just no way to get over there because they put their builder right here. So they officially stopped Demeter from having any shot at putting a dome up here, which is great. And next turn, they can just go 1-2 up from one level to the next and win the game. It's now Demeter's turn, and they could tell that there's no way they can build a dome on this spot here. But there is one other way they can stop the game from ending, and that is if they can stop the builder from having a path to get up to that spot. So they're going to move their builder up to here, and they'll go ahead and put a third level building down right there, which essentially kills the staircase that the uh, this builder was able to do. Now, unfortunately, they also need to build right here because there's still a staircase for this builder to jump up there. So they plunk down there, and they've at least stalled the game out a little bit. The Artemis player looks a little miffed. They thought they had it in the bag. They didn't quite see that, but they've got another good trick up their sleeve. They're going to go ahead and move this builder up to that spot, and now they're going to build right here, essentially building a new staircase in order for them to get up to either of these triple-level buildings. So now it's back to Demeter, and it looks like they were just prolonging the inevitable. At this point, there's really nothing they can do. They can move this builder to this location or this location, but that's not going to block this staircase over here. They could you know, build here, but that's just going to add more staircases for the Artemis player to win. And over here, even if they could move, they could, um, well, actually, they are Demeter. If they could move one spot, they could have put two domes down. But the Artemis player was smart. They left this uh, builder right here, stopping the Demeter player from having any good movements in order to be able to end their movement next to either of these spots. So there really is nothing they can do. Since they can see they can't stop Artemis from winning on the next turn, they may as well be nice. They'll go down there and build this here, just giving another stepping stone for the Artemis player, who, uh, when it's their turn, they just go 1-2. They have now gotten a builder up to the third level, and they win the game. So that was a full two-player game of Santorini. Now I'm going to jump into a couple initial impressions I've had for the game. The first of these is that it's just a beautiful-looking game. The production value that they have going on is great. You have a uh, board and then you have a little plastic uh, cliff face, another board that goes on top of that, really pulls it off the table. And then when you see the wonderful plastic building pieces that are going to be coming in the final game, you realize it's going to be a very tall three-dimensional experience. And it is a three-dimensional experience anyway, even with the flat disks, because you are stacking these uh, buildings on top of each other trying to go up high. But I love how beautiful the actual end product is going to look. And I also love the variety of gods that come with the game and how they really change things up. The game itself is very simple. You know, just move one person, build a building, that's it. Try to get to the third level. But it almost feels like an abstract uh, toolkit of a game because you have this core mechanism, but then people have these asymmetric powers from all these gods, and they add extra mechanics on top, and the way they're going to interact is going to be different each game based off of how which god you have and which god your opponent has. Maybe um, this game you can move faster because uh, of the god you have, or your opponent might not let you move up to another level when they moved up to another level. So it's not just what you can do on your turn, but sometimes your opponent can restrict you from even doing things based off of which gods they have. So it's a very cool variety that goes into it. Also, when you think about the play length of the game, you could potentially, if you're enjoying playing the game, get several sessions in because it seems like games usually last like 5 to 15 minutes from the small subset that I've seen. And um, by 5 minutes, I, that really is true. I've seen that happen because you need to be paying attention to what you're trying to do and how many turns it's going to take you to do stuff, but also what your opponent is doing. Because at the end of the day, this is less a game about building and more a game about uh, location and where you are on the board. Of course, you are building buildings in order to get your people up on top, but you oftentimes build uh, towers up to three with just the, the reasoning of pushing your opponent's builders into a place where they shouldn't be to build that dome. It's all about getting your opponent out of position to finally take advantage of the fact that they're nowhere near a spot in order to stop you from winning the game. So I really like the kind of multiple layers that are going on there. It is a simple game. I don't want to oversell its complexity from my perspective yet. I mean, maybe it is a very deep experience, but I can't really uh, talk to that at this point. But I like the different decisions that the game presents to you considering you have a very tiny rule set. If you'd like to see more full game playthroughs like this one, as well as in-depth board game reviews and vlogs, please subscribe to my channel. Also, you can directly support the channel at patreon.com slash Thanks for watching.